Hello there folks. Hey Joe Bozo here. Hey today I'm working on a little application for a customer. We got a interesting thing going on here. Uh, they want to take some discrete signals from some device and uh, based on those signals they want to send back some ASCII string to a PC control system here. So they sent me this document here for some rules. They said okay our PC is going to send you an R request for data or you can use any ASCII character. We're going to stick with the R. That means the computer is going to send an R to the red line device. And then the red line device is going to send back two characters. So you're going to send back uh, uh, a G, R, or N. I know that's three. But I mean two characters, one of those three, a G, R, or N, and a carriage return. So the G means a green color, good status. R means a red color. And this is a light, by the way. Bad. And then N means NA bad as well. I guess nothing's on at that point. So that's what they want for that condition. So we have, uh, we're going to return a G, an R, and an N whenever the PC sends an R to our device. So here's the rules of our very simple protocol that we're going to do. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and open up our Crimson database that we're going to use for an example. And uh, <clears throat> I'm doing this uh, over Ethernet here. They're going to be doing it over serial port but it's all the same so I've got uh, a set up here as a protocol here I'm just doing the raw TCP which is under pick it's under system it's right here I've got it set up as a passive device so we're just sitting there they'll do the same thing under serial here under RS-232 if I go here hit the pull down here and in this case uh, I would just do a uh, raw serial port right here this guy here does the exact same driver so uh, I'm not gonna do that here but Anyway, so that's what I got there. And then uh, I've got a program here called Read Message. And I'm using uh, a port number since I'm over Ethernet. I'm using a port 1234. No big deal. But there's this program here called On Update. So whenever the port receives a message, I run a program called Read Message. So if I go over here to Programs, here's that program, Read Message. And I put in some stuff in here for anybody I share this with some things. but. Uh, so I use the port input function, which has this structure, port port number, start character, end character, timeout, and length. So you see right here, first of all, you see there's a number five. If I go back to communications, and let me, let me get my pointer tool to work here. There we go. So you can see right here, when I click on this guy right here, that is port number five here. Now, if I was using the RS-232 port, I'll just go here, do it now. Go here. I'll go down here and pick the raw serial port. Boom. You can see your team, that one becomes port number one. And if I choose the other one, I'm just curious now that I'm doing this. Let's see what happens. Choose this guy. That becomes port number three. But since we're using this connection here, I'm going to be using number five. Notice that's right here. Also, Crimson will tell you some information down here also. All right, so back to our program. So that's where that port number comes from. Uh, I'm doing a raw, I, I created a tag called raw ASCII. It's gonna use this port input, port five. I don't know what the start character is, or I'll leave it zero, I don't have anything declared. The end character is line feed. Uh, according to them, they're gonna send us a carriage return and line feed. Uh, I don't have a timeout, and I'm just doing a length of three. The three would be, let me go back here, hold on. My three characters here would be the R from here, and then, uh, I don't know why I assume that, but uh, I assume they're going to send a line, a carriage return and line feed to this, since that's what they went back here. So anyway, that's what I did here. Uh, well, at least that's what I'm getting in. And then I'm going to take from that string, I'm going to use the left function here to parse out the carriage return and line feed and just leave the raw character and then after that I'm going to ask the question hey if the string equals R which is means they're requesting data I'm setting a bit correct I was using this for testing earlier equals one don't worry about that but then I said all right well if the green light is on I'm going to send it a G plus a carriage return if the red lights on I'm going to send it a R plus the carriage return and if the NA connection is on, I'm going to send an N plus the R. So if I go to display pages, here's my green, red, and yellow simulating here. 
And uh, let's go ahead and see if this works. Team, let me save this. Let me go ahead and uh, download this to my unit. All right. So I downloaded it to the unit. I'm using the web page here. So there it is. It's going to start back up here. And for my testing, I thought I would use Hyperterminal, but apparently Hyperterminal is no longer around. So I'm actually using Putty for this. Now, I was already live with this, so it shut down. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and start a new reset my terminal. And I'm going to restart my connection. Okay, so here I am connected. So you can see some mumble jumbo letters up here. If I put in my putty letter A, you can see it reads letter A there. If I put in letter B, whatever, it looks good. Uh, so um, that's seeing my characters there. Now, if I was to change one of these, let's say over here on the DA30, that's going to make me mad. There we go. All right. So over here now, I'm going to uh, I'm going to add another letter, or whatever. So if I send it a R, send an R, that's going to send the command. Let's see what happens. Enter. Look, I got a G back this time because the green light is on. So that's what I got there. So if I turn this off, maybe I have these buttons too small. That could be the problem. Now if I turn the red line on, and if I go over here to Putty, send an R, I get back an R. You see the green there. And if I turn that off over here, I bet that's the problem. I got that light too small. And now if I send a R from here, so I'll click over here in Putty, hit an R, I get back the end. So there are my three conditions. Again, if I put an A in here, a D, whatever, I don't get anything. If I put an R, I get back my response because that's what's reading. So uh, that is quite simply how this is going to operate for a raw serial. Now, the next thing I'm going to do on here, is I'm going to actually take a snap signal device, hopefully today, get one of those, and truly mimic this with true discrete inputs from another external device to have this run. Anyway, I just thought I'd make that quick video showing how this is working with the uh, programs uh, right here, this raw message. Oh, one thing I might tell you, I noticed over here, in communications, normally, uh, you know, if you come to my class, you know that I will, I'm a huge advocate of the old drag and drop. So I would probably try this. And this is really weird. For some reason, this field won't let me drag that in there. So you actually have to type this here, read message and open close parentheses and not say anything, hit enter, it takes it. I don't know why the drag and drop doesn't work there, but uh, anyway. So that is uh, what I'm working on today. Hey, you all have a great day, folks. See ya.